Today I was getting back on the dashboard and I uh, started putting it together and I had my other GoPro sitting on a tripod recording and I went to check on it after I put a bunch of stuff together and noticed it wasn't even on. I don't know what happened. The battery's good. I turned it on, thought I pushed record, but yeah, it turned off. But anyway, it only took me about uh, 10 or 15 minutes to get to here. There's no, I got to put the latch in that. There's no bumper on that. I was cleaning the latch up and I was just getting ready to move the camera to, to buff it when I noticed that it wasn't going. But I cleaned this in the parts washer. It's all working good. I'm going to give it a buff, lube it up. I cleaned this up. This is the, the bezel for that. And uh, this is just sitting on here. This isn't, this isn't screwed on. But essentially all what uh, holds this in are these. There's this, I just set it there. And then I just put in the, the screws. And uh, tighten them up. And I put the nuts. There's some nut on the back of that one. That one for the, the uh, wiring harness. So I think... Um, I'm going to get the glove box latch in, and then I'm going to get the wiring harness out. And then I can start installing the wiring harness on the back of this. And then I'll uh, may paint the chrome on this. Get to there tomorrow. Um, and then there's just a bunch of screws that hold that in once, you know, there's one there, there. A bunch there, some there, and up in the corners here. And uh, so, and the ashtray is in too. I'm just waiting on, uh, there's no rubber bumpers, so I'm not closing them tight. I'm just kind of pushing them in a bit and uh, till the rubber bumpers come. So let me uh, buff up the, the little stainless steel thing on the lock. I tried to tap that back in so it's not uh, all bent up. And uh, we'll give it a quick buff and install it. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's obviously it's not going to open unless I push on it a little bit because of the angle of the dash. But yeah, that works nice. It came out really nice. I was just uh, thinking of painting this and I just tried this pen on the black back here. And it actually looks pretty darn good. I was putting the paint on this and all of a sudden it started curling up. And so I sanded it down over here and put it on, and it looked really fine. Looked good after I sanded the... Uh, I don't think it was the, the repaint it was reacting with. I think it was the original chrome finish because I sanded it down like this to where all you saw was the original chrome, and it lifted just as bad. But where I... I wiped this off the lacquer thinner. That's why there's none of that paint there, but... I'm just going to have to go around and sand all the edges out just so that um, I don't have a paint reaction. I spent God knows how much time horsing with this, and it just made a mess, and I've cleaned it off. This, I'll show you what this is good for. It's really not anything that I'm interested in using again. So I'm going to go to the art store maybe tomorrow and see what I can find, and we'll finish this up. This is the next day, and I'm going to get started back on uh, the Galaxy. I just got so frustrated with that paint pen on this yesterday. It was just unbelievable. So that's just bare plastic, and I ordered something else online. I was going to go to the art store today, and I thought, ah, I don't really want to. So I got uh, some this other stuff I've used in the past on those kind of things ordered, and... Uh, so we can uh, get that taken care of. But what happened was that pen has like a round tip. I, I imagine if you're doing like, everything's kind of wide on here where you got a chrome, but I imagine if like some cars, like maybe even this, it would probably work good because it's got like a round tip and it would probably paint that just going around once perfectly. But here, 
I had to do it in three wipes down there. Let me go get the pen out of the garbage and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I just went and got a piece of scrap cardboard. See how that's rounded? You know, and you can do a... See, that's a pretty heavy line right there. Um, but it's not wide enough for what I need to do. And you can see it's almost dry. So what I did was I went the full length and then I had to come back and do the full length again. And then I had to come back and do the full length again. And then I had to fill in any little nicks like that. Well, what happened, and you can see it happening here already, is this paint reacts with itself. It's xylene. So once it's dry from painting it on, now this is still a little wet, but then if you go over it again, it wrinkles up like as if you put paint stripper on that paint. Now, I don't know if it shows up in the video because it's not as bad on the cardboard, but that is starting to, to curl a little bit, and it did here too. But if you do that, get any, it seems like you get any of the new paint on the old paint, it reacts. It's not, I think it's absorbing into the cardboard a bit. I think if it was a smooth, you know, plastic surface like that, you'd see it more. But it is, it is lifting, what I can see. But... All in all, this probably would work fine on a, you know, on a little surface to where you just needed to paint a little bit. But where you need to go the full width and even doing it like this, because that plastic is kind of dish there even after I sanded it. Even doing it like that doesn't get it all. And then when I go back to get the little spots it doesn't get, you either get a little dimple or you get this, if it's dry and you put it on, you get a, it literally looks like you'd put paint stripper on it. So that's kind of what I just wanted to show about this uh, paint pen. It's just not, not suited for what I want to do here today. So like I say, I ordered a little, little bottle of it and a brush like I've used in the past. Now you have little artist brushes and I can paint that trim all up nice without it, you know, stripping itself like this does. Um, it literally acts like paint stripper on itself. And uh, this is still kind of wet. I bet if I wait a few more minutes. But the, another thing, too, on the plastic as I'm putting it on, like, like for example, if I'm doing it from here to here, on the plastic, by the time I get to about here, this back here is dry. And then, you know, so I thought, well, I'll just do a little here, a little here, a little here, and then I'll go like that. But then it's dry here, and I got the reaction here. I bet I sanded that out five times trying it different ways with this and finally just gave up. I spent two hours trying to make that look nice. And another reason why I'm going to take the steering column out to paint it and disassemble it is I got uh, this to, you know, how the shift lever was loose in, in the collar. Well, I found a new old stock one, and as you remember, these holes are hogged out in the column, and I got to looking at it, and that's pretty, the one, I think it's this one, the top one, is pretty severely hogged out to the point to where if I drill it out, there's going to be very little meat for the next size roll pin if I drill it out. And I'm afraid it might bust right here, you know, if somebody leans on the lever too hard. So I did get a this is new old stock, brand new. So I'll clean this up, zinc chromate it, chromate it maybe today, and we'll get that painted. And of course, I'll have to uh, take the column apart to install this. This is where the spring goes down in, the springs the lever, the little fastener holes. So we'll get this. Uh, it's pretty dusty. So I'll clean it up. I'll put it in a pan with some lacquer thinner. Using my favorite solvent here, I just kind of lacquer thinner and paintbrush and just get all the oil and dirt and grease and everything off of it. I'm not going to paint much of the, in especially the inside of that color. I'm not going to paint any of the inside of it, but I want to get anything that might show painted. So I'm going to clean it up as best I can here. And then I'll give it a quick prime and we'll give it a paint job. This gets all a lot of dirt and stuff. You know, after sitting on a shelf for 
darn near 60 years, these things get kind of nasty. And a lot of times stuff, you know, new old stock stuff sits around so long it just becomes unusable. So you got to be really careful with new old stock stuff. But stuff like this, you generally, you know, if it's not corroded or anything, it's generally all right. But yeah, corrosion is common on new old stock stuff. So you got to be careful when you buy new old stock that you don't get something that's in you know really bad shape because just because it's new old stock doesn't mean it's like brand new and I'm not a big fan you can buy these reproduction they're about I don't know 50 or 60 bucks but this pointer is different it's just like a narrow slit in there instead of like see how that's like a little different pointer it's just a straight slit and uh, I just am not a big fan of like something like this reproduction. Is it going to fit the column right? Or is it going to bind? Or so what's going to happen in the future? So something like this, I would reuse the original before I put a reproduction on it. But seeing I found a new old stock one. And, you know, mind you, I paid $45 for this plus shipping, which was another like $12. So... I got almost 60 bucks invested in just this part right here, but it'll definitely make it worth, you know, worthwhile. So I'm just, looks pretty good now. I'm going to just blow it off a little compressed air, hang it from one of my wires and give it a shot of uh, zinc chromate primer. My brushes, these cheap brushes just fall apart, but they work good for this and I use them to clean my spray guns and get where that spring pocket is really good. There's a lot of like old dirt collected in there. So I like to make sure I get everything out. And then when I put the column back together, we'll lube it all up real nice. So there we go. That looks better, primed up, ready for paint. So when we get ready to put the column together, I might put the lever on this after I get it from the plater before I install this on the column. It might make it easier to just tap a roll pin through there. Well, if that shows up, it's just there's just two Phillips screws holding that fuse box in. And we can get the dash harness out. And what I can't get out will just stay. I gotta unplug the neutral safety switch. I've already unplugged the brake light switch. And then the harness should hopefully be ready to come out. I might have to unplug like that connector there. I have to go turn my radio off every time I want to make a clip here. But the, see, I wrote red A on that because that's a black connector with a gray wire with a red tracer. And it plugs into one with a red connector and it's a black wire with a blue tracer. The rest of them, like those plugs, that goes to the neutral safety switch. That goes to the rear, you know, to this harness that goes to the back of the car for the gas gauge and tail lights and whatnot and uh there's one more wiring harness thing here that i gotta find the connector in for that go oh goes down to the to, to the switch i gotta get that off and the wires this and the harness will lift right out that goes the steering column to the turn signals to the rear tail lights to the convertible top that's for the convertible top I unplugged it so I can clean the switch up these go to the to this harness there's they're all color coded and uh, there's a red and a anyway there are, everything's color coded that it's got a plug back into so I'm not worried about and the plugs are generally one one shape it looks I'm gonna take this parking brake assembly out and clean it up and install that switch on it and when I have this assembly out I can get in these vents I might take them out so I can get in there I can't see in there I don't know what the but I want to get in there and clean all the inside of that cowl out in there and paint that looks pretty good it's all primer in there so we'll get that all cleaned out when I you know, I'll just unscrew it and uh, then with this parking brake out I can get that out and get in there and undercoat paint and undercoat in there really well 
All right, let me uh, lift the harness out and I'll get the harness cleaned up and we'll install it on the dash. I changed the dimmer switch because I was driving the car, but yeah, I gotta take it back out. I gotta take out a screw right there to get the wiring connector, that off, so I have the wiring will come out and unplug the connector from that. So let me get the sockets and get that off. The wiring harness is out. It was a little bit of a pain to get the connectors out of the firewall, I'll show you, but these are the, that's the wiper harness. This is the turn signal horn, the harness that goes up in the column found this. I don't know where this goes, but this was under the carpet. So we'll, uh, we'll get the harness cleaned up next. This is the passenger side. This goes to the, goes to the door switch, dome light, four ways, ashtray light, um, cigarette lighter, the courtesy light heater control or the heater blower motor so let me um ignition switch you know heater blower motor again panel lights warning lights turn signal flasher um all the stuff goes to the you know this goes to the voltage regulator for the gauges this i think goes to the fuel gauge um i think that goes to the fuel gauge anyway we'll get it all back right um this goes to the other door switch that is a connector to the um neutral safety switch i think brake light switch or maybe i got these reversed maybe this isn't anyway one's neutral safety one's brake light they'll only fit one way this is the back of the fuse box we'll clean that all up why it's all a little toilet bowl cleaner we'll clean those connectors up like new but these were the connectors that were a nightmare see how these little ears bend over here to hold it in the firewall and i had to straighten them out so when i put it back in i can uh bend them back over hopefully they won't snap off but if they do i'll have to fix something up and then there's a little sealer around the edges so we can do that but this all all needs to be cleaned up. These are the things that hold it up in the, the dash. This one holds it kind of to the, to, there's a bolt welded right here where that one goes. And then these are the ones that hold it up above and there. And then there's another thing in the car that curls over to holds it. That goes to the headlight switch. So, all right, the harness is out. I'm going to clean everything up so it looks like new and install it on the dash. Now that I had lunch, I'm going to start cleaning this up. I'm going to wipe this down with lacquer thinner, but I'm not going to wipe this down. I don't want to take any of that writing off, and lacquer thinner will take that off. And that is just like silk screened on, and I'm going to pop the fuses out and then just put this down in some toilet bowl cleaner, and then I'll rinse it with water and blow it with compressed air, and this will wipe that down really good get it back to looking nice and clean looking clean everything up and uh we'll install it on the dash i'm gonna sit here in my uh chair with the radio on so yeah i'm not gonna visit video just wiping stuff down but i'm gonna get to it right now so this little connector here for the interior light was broken so i'm just gonna solder it up I already tinned the tip of the, the gun, but you heat where you want the solder to suck. Whoops. I didn't want it to turn like that. All right, let me, um, I got a it's actually stuck on there, but I want it. That's a cold solder. See how it's dull? That means it's a cold solder. So we'll get it all nice and hot and get the solder to suck in there. There we go. See how it sucks it right up in there? See how it's shiny? If it's dull, it's cold. It's not going to hold. If it's shiny, it will hold. And now I already put this little 
gadget in the spring back in the socket. This is the interior light. The only interior light in the whole car. So that's back in there. And then uh, put the bulb back in. There we go. And that's repaired. I have the harness all wiped down with lacquer thinner. I took a little pan with a brush and lacquer thinner and cleaned all the connectors. I didn't clean this. It's so like I say, I didn't want to take the silk screening off, but I am going to clean this in toilet bowl cleaner. See, I took the fuses out. I cleaned these with the with the brush and lacquer thinner just to make sure, you know, it's all nice and clean. And this, it's so all the connectors, the wiring around the connectors. And I'll put new fuses in. This was one of the fuses I took out. You can see kind of corroded and, and broke. These are the other fuses. These are all good. This fuse was good because what it powered worked. That powered, I think, the instrument panel lights. The little fuse was, I broke was right there. Yeah, it says instrument and RNL. That's radio, heater, emergency warning, dome. This one's been out of the car since I've had it because you know, I don't want the why the doors are open that that light that I just soldered up on or the trunk light because I been as you can see I've been leaving the trunk open a lot because I store parts in there. It's just easier to leave the trunk open to go in and out of the trunk than to have to open it every time I wanna get in the car. So let me clean this up with some toilet bowl cleaner and I'll uh, uh put that sheet down to set this face down on so I don't scratch anything. And we'll put this in. Just let that soak for a couple minutes. That's what I'm using. Just a mild acid. It'll clean all our corrosion off those uh, points. So let me just let that sit a minute or two. And then I'll we'll go rinse it out in some hot water in the laundry tub. And that'll be clean. Blow it off with some compressed air when I'm done. Just make sure there's no moisture in it. I got the wearing harness in. This is the... Four way flasher doohickey. Um, I haven't put the glove box liner in yet because um, I got a lot of. Uh, I got to clean it up and I don't want to put that in until I get the dash in so I don't bust it up. And I'm, I'll am i take this bracket off when I go before I put the dash in. I'll put that in after. Just make life a lot easier. But got the speaker in, all the wiring harness. Fastened the way it originally was. The brake alarm warning leg will go to the switch on the parking brake pedal. And uh, routed the wiring exactly where they said. All the uh, connectors that go to the other harnesses. This is the fuse panel and that's all cleaned up and has all new correct fuses in it. Yeah, it's in good shape. That's... Uh, I think I might uh, see if the dash lights, you know, ch just check lights on it and stuff. We'll see if they uh, work. Yeah, I don't know if this, the panel lights are a heck of a lot brighter, but like I say, my video camera doesn't really do the lights justice, but they're all, all working. The clock is, clock is actually running right now. So yeah, and the headlight switch turns the, uh, and the dimmer works. So there we go. We got a, all the insta. The radio light works now. How awesome is that? Yeah. So everything is uh, the clock just wound again. All right. Not a lot of stuff showing up. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure all that stuff was working. You can see the clocks going. I imagine the radio would turn on, but there's no antenna plugged into it, so I'm not going to put any effort into turning it on. But yeah, that's looking, looking good. I'm going to call it quits. Let's see if the glove box light comes on. I don't know if I can open this. Let me uh, set my camera. It certainly does work. Yeah, and the switch works too because as you see as I close it, it goes out. 
There we go. So I want to see if the these idiot lights illuminate too. These these light up because when I turn the four-way flasher switch on, if I can get to it here, yeah, right here, those light up. Both of them. So both those bulbs are good. They're not blinking because there's not enough load on them. But I turned the key on because that's what powers the stuff to this. And then you complete a circuit to ground to simulate the the uh, idiot light coming on. So let me, uh, I just went through the wiring diagram and kind of, that's the cold. And we got a cold light. Next one I think is oil. And we got an oil light. I think this top one is the alternator light and we got an alternator light. So we got all uh, the idiot lights illuminating on the dash. And uh, if I take this parking brake thing and ground it, that even comes on. So that's even wired up correct. Now if I turn the key off, that will not illuminate anymore. So let me uh, let me just put the the clip in here. If I can, it'll stay in there, so you can kind of see working there. Key off, light off. So that's just simulating the parking brake being applied. So there we go. And the, like I say, the clock. It's actually still working too. So there, the wiring harness is installed. And uh, I think next will be the steering column coming out of the car, like I say, for the fourth or fifth time maybe. I'm gonna do the pad just before this panel goes in the car so it's not sitting around with it. Yeah, just get the wiring schematics out and just trace the, you know, see what colors wires do what and trace them to what you know, what uh, terminal and the connector. That little tab I found earlier, I found where it goes. It goes right here. And uh, when I find it, it's probably underneath the sheet somewhere. I'll uh, take the sheets off when I take the dashboard out and I'll have that. But um, it's, I got uh, one more thing I got to do for a viewer that uh, asked about the locations of the seat belt mounts. So he can put seat belts in his car. So let me uh, let me do some measuring here, and I'll show some measurements. Front seat's the easiest to get to first, so I'm measuring from that brace to about the center of the hole. I'm going to guess is about 14 inches from the edge of the sill plate to probably about the center of the bolts, four and a quarter inches. To the bolt there. Well, I don't know how I'm going to measure that, but from here it's 27 and a quarter inches, just my tape measure touching the bolt. That might be, you know, I don't think that's a lot of this stuff is super important. You just kind of put it to where you like it. But we'll uh, measure from the carpet to the bolt is about eight inches. All right, let me get the back ones too. Now this being a convertible, if yours is a hard top, it might be different, but measuring from this part here to the center is about six inches, six and a quarter maybe. This component is four and about four inches. So add four inches if it's, if you're measuring right from like this, this panel here. And then to the, Next one over here is, uh, it's hard to, there, sorry, I'm jacking the camera all over. That's 17 and a quarter inches to the center. And there is a seam here. And from the seam, just pushed up against the seam to the center of the bolt is about an inch and a half, I'm guessing. That one's about an inch, maybe not quite an inch. So this one's up a little higher. I don't think it really has to be, you know, all that exact. 
you can get it within probably a quarter or half inch of that and you'd be okay but remember there is a plate that goes underneath the car there's let me see if i can show you see that big round disc just in to the forward end of the brake hydraulic line that's what uh keeps the seat belt from ripping through the floor pan if you get in a crash so you need Either get a plate piece of plate steel and weld a nut to it the right size or just see if you can find some of those. But you definitely need a plate underneath the car there. And uh, yeah, it still looks pretty good under here. Everything looks good. Yeah, I haven't uh, been underneath the car in a while. Yeah. It needs a little wash, but for the most part, you know, as dusty as can be under here, but that's what happens when you work on the cars and drive them. But I haven't washed it since I bought it. <laughs> so, yeah, it probably could use a, a good bath. I painted the shift collar, so I'll let it dry, and I'll paint the red in there with that same paint I painted the speedometer needles with and whatnot. But I think that'll be... Just Jim Dandy will take care of the loose shift lever. One last item too, you know, the cold light is dimmer than the other lights. And the reason why, I guess, is so it doesn't be annoying at night. But there's a resistor in the wiring diagram in the wiring for the cold light. So it runs at a lower voltage. So that is why the cold light is dimmer than the rest of the idiot lights in the instrument panel. All right, I'm gonna end this video here. If you like the video, definitely hit the like button. It certainly helps. If you wanna see this dashboard finished up and in the galaxy, hit that 348 engine icon there and subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching my videos.